I think the most interesting part of this video is going to be when we get up to the part where I want you to make things exclusive to force me into a bad decision. Hey, I'm Alex Radical from Board Game Co. and this is a conversation around Kickstarter exclusives. Kickstarter exclusives. We're going to go into a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of conversations, but the point, the reason, the rationale for this video is the conversation around exclusive content in Kickstarter, why it exists, what we can and can't do about it, why I'm for it, and why many others are against it, and a whole bunch of side conversations around that. To start off with, the general idea of Kickstarter exclusive, in case you're missing it, is Kickstarter is a platform, crowdfunding is a platform, I should say crowdfunding exclusives. Crowdfunding is the concept of, of buying a game, whether on GameFound, on Kickstarter, and you're, you're buying a game before it really exists. You're investing in the product. You're going to go ahead and get that thing in a year and a half, and now part of that conversation sometimes, but not always, involves something exclusive. Here you go. You get an extra miniature that no one else is getting. You're going to get an art cover that no one else is getting. You're going to get entire 14 new expansions that no one else can ever get. Or before you know it, maybe even the entire game will only ever exist on crowdfunding. It's exclusive. If you want it, you have to get it now. That's the concept. The concept of pushing someone into a decision because of the fact that they're, they're uncertain what the future will hold and they want that thing that you've just offered, and so now you're preying on their FOMO, their fear of missing out. That's what Kickstarter exclusives are. That's the basis of the conversation, but that's not how we're going to approach all this. We're going to take a giant step back from everything we just said and go straight into the conversation of Kickstarter or crowdfunding. I'm going to use the word Kickstarter a lot in this video, but it means any form of crowdfunding. Backer kits jumping into the crowdfunding space, they'll be, they'll be included in this conversation as well. When you put a product on Kickstarter, when you put a product on crowdfunding and you give it to the op people the option of buying the product, you effectively have two options. As a company, you have two options and only two options. There are cascading chains down those options, but there are effectively two options. Option one is you give people no financial exclusives or promotional or FOMO-based reason to get that product. You simply say, hey, here's the product. It's going to run you... 40 bucks, okay? And you can get it two and a half years from now, when it shows up at retail, you can also get it for $40 and the product will be exactly the same. You are offering no incentive whatsoever that is attached to what they're getting or exclusive content or anything along those lines or price point. There's no, there's no incentive. You're simply relying on the fact that, hey, you can get this now or you can get it later. Option two is you provide an incentive. It's a very binary concept. The concept is incentive or no incentive. Now, to be fair, there is always an incentive. There's always an incentive, no matter what you do, even if you provide no additional incentive, but the incentives get smaller and smaller. Because effectively, when you back a product, when you say, I'm going to give you money today for a product that won't exist for another year plus, or I could just get it a year plus at the same price point, the question is why? Why would anyone do that? Why should anyone do that? Why should you ever back a product a game in this case, and our conversations on this channel, why should you ever back a game unless there's a reason to do so? And so now we have to start quantifying the reasons. What are the reasons to do so? What are the reasons to ever back a game as opposed to getting it later? And that's where we start going down a rabbit hole that will include many things that have a degree of exclusivity to them, but not everything. Reason one is you get the game earlier. It is a reason. It's a reason that is not always true, but it is a reason that could be on the table. This game that you're backing, you'll get it in a year. Everyone else will get it at retail in 18 months. That's entirely possible. You are now paying a price, and you're paying the same price you'll get later. Maybe even you're paying more. Maybe you're paying $60 for a game other people will be able to get for $40, but you're getting it six months earlier. Maybe you care about that. I generally don't. I a little bit now that I'm a content creator. Now it matters I drop more because it, there's, a, there's a cash value to that coverage early, but if I'm not a content creator, I have plenty of games. I'm not in a rush for that one special magical game that I have to have, but there's plenty of other games I'll always have. But you might. It is a reason. The first problem with that reason is that not all companies offer it. Practically speaking, from a logistics standpoint, intentionally holding off on things is hard. It's not like a simple thing. It's actually more work to intentionally hold off on things, especially if the product is the same. If the product is the same, why wouldn't you make it all now? Why wouldn't you ship it all now? And now what's your game plan? To hold it in a warehouse for six months and paying those storage costs? Or to do multiple ways? It is actually more work and more expense as a creator to offer that as a perk to your backers, if the products are the same. If the products are different, it's a little different conversation around modern manufacturing, but in general, if they're the same, you're actually putting more work on yourself to do that. Maybe you'll do it, though, because you had to give an incentive. 
or in your mind you have to give an incentive. But we do see it less and less. What we see more and more of is even in the case where companies said that you should get that delay, that, that you know, you'll get it earlier, sometimes you have to see updates after the fact of, hey, I know we said X, Y, and Z, but also the product's like six months later than we thought, and no one saw that coming at all because that never happens in crowdfunding. And now we have to ask you, we're about to hit Gen Con, and like, we'd love to be able to sell the product, and it's really important to the success of the company, and anyone with a soul should say yes to that. Of course you should be able to. But that goes back to the fact that to me it's just not a value. I will say yes to the fact that go ahead and sell it. I don't care when other people get the product. I care when I get the product. Getting it earlier than others is not a concern for me. It's not a factor for me. Just getting it is a factor. But again, it is an incentive. I'm not dismissing it in general. I'm just saying I think it is a smaller incentive and not as common as it used to be as a valued incentive. But getting a game earlier is an incentive. The next incentive is supporting the company. When you pay $40 for that game on Kickstarter versus when you pay $40 for the game after the fact, you are giving the company more money. There's less people in the chain of in the chain of command. There's less retailers and distributors. All these are the factors. Yes, you have the 10% Kickstarter fee and transaction, all that stuff. But when you back a game on Kickstarter, the company gets more money than otherwise, which might be a value to you. Might be. To me, it's never really been that strong a value. Supporting the retailers and the, the distributors are just as much a part of the conversation. Maybe a little bit more on the publisher. Maybe I particularly like that publisher. If I do particularly like the publisher, sure. But most of the time, supporting people, you're supporting people along the way no matter what you do. You're just mentally reallocating who your support is going to. I also think people use that as a reason a lot when they don't actually mean it. Because if the value is supporting them, you can also just write someone a check sometimes. You can give them a little bit of extra money. If you're willing to pay a premium on Kickstarter, why not not pay a premium? Just get the product you know a year from now and send them a $10 donation on Kickstarter and don't get to the game at all. I think we often use it as a rationale as to why we'll pay a little extra. But hey, like I'm at least I'm at least I'm supporting the publisher. Like you're using your FOMO, you're letting your FOMO get in the way, and you you say it's to support the publisher. It could be. I just it's a fine if you are. There's nothing wrong with it. I think it's a good thing to reallocate your funds in the nature of supporting. It's just I don't know if it's happening that often, but it's a thing. It's a concept. It's, and again, if you like the publisher, sometimes I do, then I value that concept more. Hey, it's Orange Nebula. I love Orange Nebula. I, I want to give them all the money, so let's go ahead and get their game from them instead of a miniature market. Nothing against Miniature Market. Miniature Market's great too, but I like Oneb more. Why? Because they seem like genuinely nice folks. Supporting the publisher. That's the reason. Now, the thing we haven't got to yet, before we go into the other reasons, is why would you get that game early without an incentive? If there's no incentive, if there's no incentive whatsoever, before we get to these incentives, or too late now, I did two of them, the reason not to get a game on Kickstarter, and there's plenty of reasons, even if the products are exactly the same price, there's plenty of reasons not to get the game. The first is the fact that you're locking up your money for two years. You could put that money, that $40, you could put that into any different types of savings or things, or just put it into your mortgage. Put it into your mortgage and get that money back over the next two years and buy the game later. There is a time value of money, and by giving up money a year in advance, a year and a half, two years in advance, you're doing yourself a disservice. It might not be the biggest deal in the world to you, but it certainly is a disservice. Put that money into your mortgage, and then a year and a half from now, two years from now, go ahead and buy the game. There is a time value of money. Second is risk. What happens if the Kickstarter fails? By buying a game at the same price point now versus the same price point later, what happens if the Kickstarter fails? What happens if things go belly up? Why would you voluntarily pay the same price with no incentive, with no reward, now when you could do so later? And that just applies to the general concept of the game failing entirely, of the company failing entirely. We haven't even talked about the risk of the, is the, whether the game is good or not. Why would you pay for a game today when there's a handful of content creators who can give their opinions versus waiting until hundreds of people have bought the game and you can start to see the reviews pour in and start to see whether it's really a game for you? Then there's a factor of what's happening in your life in two years. Are you still even playing board games? Is your game group the same? I've seen people comment like, hey, I bought all these Kickstarters and now I moved and I have no game group and I'm just playing solo games and all these non-solo games that I backed a year ago, that's thousands of dollars of games that don't help me. Your situation might change in any number of ways, shapes, and forms. You might die, not to get too morbid, but that does happen. People do die and people back Kickstarters and then die and they have a stream of products showing up their way and that money is less needed on board games. Situations can change and do change. There's no strong incentive to give up your money with no reason unless there's a reason. Which brings us back to the continuation of the reasons. The third reason is the fact that you're bringing the product to life. You're making the product happen. This game would not exist unless you back it in, so you should be a part of the conversation. And most of the time, that's garbage. Most of the time. I'm not saying the game doesn't need backers. I'm not saying the company doesn't need backers. They do. 
But more often than not, your individual back is not making the difference. You know, if you're sitting there with a game that's tightly funded, it's got like, it's, it's just it's like a $50,000 goal and you're at $53,000, sure, by all means. But if it's at a $50,000 goal and there's $100,000, if this is at a $100,000 goal, it's $120,000, your back is not needed. So why would you voluntarily give up your money and absorb all those other risks unless there's an incentive? Which brings us to the often more relevant incentives. The first is FOMO in general. Fear of missing out in general. Nothing actually happening, no Kickstarter exclusive, nothing, no content, anything else. Just the general idea of the fact that this game exists on Kickstarter and you sit there and you're like, hey, we funded, we're $20,000, we're $23,000 over $20,000. Maybe the game doesn't show up at retail. Maybe this game never becomes a product at all. Maybe your chances are buying it today or trying to hopelessly hunt it down the second-hand market. Maybe you don't even want the second-hand market. Maybe you don't like used games. That's totally fine and totally reasonable. So the general FOMO of what will happen here exists. What will happen with this product? Will it ever go to retail? And sometimes they say things will go to retail and they don't. Remember Marvel United, where they had all these plans for the Marvel United expansions to go to retail and basically none of them did. That's an opportunity where people could have said, hey, I'm just going to get this at retail. It turns out they couldn't. They had to follow Kickstarter, so you still had an opportunity to get your hands on them, but like, what if they didn't? What if things are supposed to go to retail and they don't? And that does happen a lot. So the general pure FOMO without any additional aspects is often a reason people back Kickstarters. It's often a reason why people sit there and say, I don't know what will happen, and so I could take a chance in retail, or I could just back it today because I really, really want this game. That's where we start to lean into the other things, such as more FOMO. The game itself is Kickstarter exclusive. The game won't exist otherwise. There are extras included in your game. Extras to whatever degree, shape, or form. There's this 17 miniatures that you won't get in the retail version. There's metal coins that you can only get on the Kickstarter. There's all these other aspects, whatever they are, however small, from a first player marker all the way up to 15 Kickstarter exclusive expansions. There's a degree of exclusive content that proudly, loudly states, if you want this content, you have to back this game here and now. And that works. It works because it gives people a reason to back. Because the inherent structure and nature of Kickstarter is that the starting baseline is you should have more reasons not to back than you have to back. You have to give a reason for someone to actually give up money a year in advance to absorb all those risks and to sit there and say, I'm still going to give you my money. I'm still going to buy the product. It's one of the reasons why many Kickstarters have that little proudly why back now section and a list of reasons that may or may not matter to you and each section is different. Get this game earlier than other, other people. Maybe you care, maybe you don't. Help support and create this game. Maybe you care, maybe you don't. 17 miniatures extra that you will never see elsewhere. Maybe you care and maybe you don't. But they're giving you reasons to back now because what they don't say is reasons why to not back now. The starting baseline for crowdfunding is reasons why not to back. Risk that the product will ever exist. Risk that the product will be any good. The time value of your money. Risk to your personal situation and interest level in the product. It's risk, 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 risk. Everything about Kickstarter is risk and then a drop of just the time value of money. There's a starting baseline of why not to back. Every game you ever see on crowdfunding, the starting baseline is you should not back it. And then from there you have to decide whether you want to anyway. And that's why Kickstarter exclusive exists. Because I think a lot for a lot of people, not for everyone, a lot of these reasons are not enough. Now the interesting thing is when a company does give you zero reasons to back, you will still still you'll still see people backing. Some of that is just not thinking it through. Some of it's not caring. Some of it is just the general degree of FOMO of just what if, what if. I don't want the what ifs. I want to lock this in today, even if I'm dealing with all the other risks. Everyone is going to exist on their own scale of rationale, their own scale of why they should or shouldn't. But for the most part, I personally believe that until they give you a reason to get the product, until they reason to give you a reason to get the game, I think your starting baseline for the most part should be not. You want to support the company? That's great. That's admirable. You know what else is true? The companies make more money on Kickstarter than they make at retail, so why can't they give you something extra? Why can't they give you a break? It's a longer conversation, by the way. There are answers as to why they can't always give you a break. But as a starting baseline, the company's already making more. If I buy the game at retail, they make X. If I buy the game at Kickstarter, they make two or three times X. So give me something back. Make this a mutually beneficial exchange and not just a beneficial exchange. Getting it earlier, I don't care. Give me a reason to back the game, and for me, that reason is price point and exclusive content. Price point's another factor that gets complicated quickly. Because one of the things you could do is you could give people a better price point. You could say, here's the game, it's going to cost $60 at retail, and we're going to give it to you for 
The first problem is that's a lie. Every single time it's a lie. When it says $60 retail, what they mean is a $60 MSRP, which means, typically, typically speaking, if you if you buy your games online like I do, that $60 MSRP is really $47, and they just gave it to you $50 on Kickstarter, but they're also charging you shipping, so now you're paying $60 on Kickstarter for a game that's going to run you $47 with free shipping once you get your $100 order from Miniature Market, and so they're overcharging you, even as they sit there and look at your face and tell you the price point's better. It's not. I'm not saying this with any resentment towards the companies it's a complicated game out there it's a very complicated game they can't give you the best price points because it undercuts the value they have to be mindful of their retail partners who are actually in stores charging higher msrps too because they have to be mindful of their partners it is a delicate complicated game that companies play and companies are constantly and frequently struggling none of this video is about the fact that you shouldn't support companies none of this video is about the fact that companies none of it's anti-companies in any way shape or form the companies have to make the decisions they have to make. This is just a conversation around exclusive content, why it exists, and why I'm okay with it. Forget okay with it, why I want it. It's hard to deal with the prices. And it's hard for a lot of people to value some of the peripherals. But it's a lot easier for people to sit there and say, I won't get this game otherwise. And so I think in general, exclusive content tends to work best. Things that strongly push people towards getting the game now instead of retail tend to work best. The highest funded campaigns often, not always, tend to have a lot of exclusive content. There are exceptions. Frosthaven is going to be staring you, you in your face, although that one did give you a better price in the end. And the problem is exclusive content works better the more there is. A custom box sleeve on a box that no one else will get, 5% of people will care. An exclusive miniature hero that you don't otherwise get, 8% of people will care. A Kickstarter exclusive expansion that you can't get that entire expansion, 22% of people will care. The more content you add, the more stuff you make unavailable, the more stuff you hide behind the paywall of FOMO. If you don't get it now, you'll never get it. The more people will care and the more people will back and the better the campaign will do and the better the company will do. But there's a cost to it. There's a cost in many ways, shapes, and forms. The first cost is how do you make sure that the exclusive content you're giving doesn't hurt the final product? How do you make sure that whatever goes on a retail shelf does not feel like half a game? How do you make sure that you don't build resentment in the people who are supporting you, that they feel tricked and betrayed into a bad decision at a given time? The complicated answers. And the first baseline there, by the way, is the fact that you are being tricked and influenced into making a decision right now. That's the whole point of the system. Because crowdfunding as a starting baseline gives you more reasons to walk away. The company has to give you all the reasons to actually sit here and consider this. Because as a consumer, what we want is we want the best option. We want this game to exist, and we would like to get it down the road and not back it today. Of course we would. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we want to not absorb that risk? We want the game to exist. We want the company to exist. We want that product to come to light, and we want to be able to have it. But if the company is putting it on crowdfunding, they also need to fund, and so they need to actually incentivize people to give them money, which just results in a complicated conversation in which there are no clear winners as long as you're using a crowdfunding model. Now, there are exceptions. There are companies like Thunderworks who have done amazing large campaigns with huge amounts of support and not really hidden things behind much of a wall. There are companies like uh, Stronghold Games has done this with a lot of the campaigns, having the promos again the Kickstarter and then having the promos available later on BGG Store. You have companies like Leader Games, tons of stuff, not a lot of exclusive content. You have companies like, uh, like Frosthaven, no exclusive content, nothing behind a paywall. Here's a better price, price that turns out to be even better. There are companies that are able to do that and are able to incentivize people to back without heavily preying on FOMO. But a common denominator in most of those companies is they already have a massive following. They already have a massive following of people who will follow them through thick and thin no matter what, who are happy to buy the game. Once you hit a certain level of success, crowdfunding can effectively become a pre-order system where the backers just sit there and give you money even when they shouldn't because you have enough of a loyal audience that they'll do so. So yes, you can achieve that. I just don't think it's the common answer. I think it's the exception rather than the norm, but it does happen. As far as myself, I find myself weirdly and twistedly and bizarrely looking for exclusive content. I want the exclusive content. Do you know why? Because often that baseline FOMO always exists. That baseline FOMO of what if? What will happen? Will I be able to get this later? Will the price go up later? Will the state of the world change? Will this, will this game ever go to retail at all? That baseline FOMO always exists with every campaign. It's not enough for me to back in most cases, but it's just there in the back of my head. And if I like a game enough, maybe I'll be pushed over the edge. And you can't take away that baseline FOMO. It just inherently exists within the Kickstarter ecosystem. The product exists today. It does not exist tomorrow. 
And so I find myself weighing up the price point, the risk, all those other factors, the time value of money. I find myself weighing those up against the baseline FOMO. And depending how much I like the game, I fall one way or the other. But when you put exclusive content on the table, what you've done is you've made it a very clear determination that Kickstarter crowdfunding is the right place for me to get this product. If I'm interested. If I'm not interested, I don't really care what you do. Because if I'm not interested, I'm just not getting the game. But if I am interested in the game and I'm wrestling with my own FOMO, because of the fact that I'm constantly bickering which side I land on, by you, by the company putting exclusive stuff in, here's your stretch goals, here's the unlocks, here's that expansion you won't be able to get, here are all the reasons why you should get this today, it pushes me over the edge. It makes a hard and nuanced decision significantly easier for myself. Selfishly. This is selfish comment right now. Because for many people, they don't want to back the game. They want it to get it at retail. And their decision, which may have fallen on this side of the fence, they now find themselves being preyed upon. As I find myself starting here and being pushed here, they find themselves starting here and being dragged reluctantly over a finish line. And that's the problem with Kickstarter exclusives. They serve a purpose. I think they serve an essential purpose. I think they are essential to the Kickstarter ecosystem, to the crowdfunding ecosystem. I think they are important, and I think they make campaigns do well. I think they reward the people who are willing to take a risk on the product. They reward the people who are willing to step out on a limb and say, even though this only has four content creators talking about it, I will go ahead and support the company and support the product and make this actually exist. It is a reward-based system that gives the reward to the people who actually backed and makes those who didn't want to back feel penalized. There are no winners here. It's just complicated stuff as there always is. So that's the conversation on exclusives. It's a conversation that people have asked me to have around the nature of why I'm for exclusives or what's the problem with exclusives or companies shouldn't give exclusive or whatever the, whatever the nuanced version of your personal preference is. I just think if you offer somebody a price point in a product, you have to give them a reason to back. If you have better reasons, we can have a conversation. But I'm fine with exclusive content because it's a very good reason. Until next time, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. And as always, have a good one.